Joining us now from the House GOP Doctors Caucus, he's Dr. Greg Murphy. It's great to have you back on, Dr. Murphy. Okay, I want you to listen to this, another explosive hearing on Capitol Hill involving fireworks with Dr. Fauci. Watch this. Dr. Fauci, do you really think it's appropriate to use your $420,000 salary to attack scientists that disagree with you? I think in you usual did. fashion, Senator, you are distorting everything about me. Did you First ever object all, to Dr. Collins' characterization of them as fringe? Did you write back to Dr. Collins and say, no, they're not fringe, they're esteemed scientists, and it would be beneath I, me I did to not do that? Do, you responded to him that you would do it, uh, and you immediately got an article you, in you, Wired, you, and you sent it back to him and said, hey, look, I've got them, I nailed them in Wired of all scientific publications. That's not publications. what went on. You there you go again. That you was just your do the same thing every hearing. That was your response. And so, this, wasn't, so, this wasn't the only time. So your desire to take You're down people... You're absolutely incorrect. As usual, Senator, you no. are incorrect. Almost everything you well, said... Well, no, you deny. You deny. Right. But the emails tell the truth of this. No. Do you think anybody has had more influence let, over let our response finish. to this than you have? Do you Madam think it's a great Chair, success? I... Do you think it's a great success what's happened right. so far? Do you think you, the lockdowns said... are good for our kids? Do you think we slowed down the death rate? More people have died now under President Biden than did under President Trump. You are the one responsible. You are the architect. You are the lead architect for the response from the government. And now 800,000 people have died. Right. So you think it's a, a winning success what you've advocated for government? Okay, you know, Dr. Murphy, it's, it might be a push to blame anybody for COVID deaths, yeah. right? I mean, that's a, that's, that's a push. But the point is, is that uh, former NIH director Francis Collins had emailed Dr. Fauci talking about a, quote, devastating media takedown to go after scientists who are against lockdowns, who, who talked about herd immunity, who said, let's focus on the vulnerable. That's <laughs> what's, uh, the, what was at stake right there. No? What do you say? Yeah, I, I agree completely. And Liz, you know, we can't blame one person. This is a virus. But the problem is, turn in the, uh, turn in the obverse. He's taken credit, or Biden's tried to take credit, for crushing the virus. Well, that was never going to happen. And the fact, and, and I hate to say this about a fellow physician, but Fauci has become the figurehead of this pandemic for this nation, and his arrogance has really turned so many people off. It's, it's turned off people from getting vaccinated. It's turned off people from trusting physicians. So I think that really, he's really truly done more harm um, in some ways than good yeah. for the rest of the country during the pandemic. And then there are emails apparently doc, that showed Dr. Fauci covering up in early February 2020, the possibility COVID-19 leaked from labs in China. He called it a bright, shiny object. When this is a serious thing that's being investigated by the WHO and other officials from around the world, this possibility, right? Yeah, and definitely it is a possibility, Liz. And the sad thing is, with this administration, whether they're being blackmailed by China, at some point we'll know, uh, with hopefully with good assurity. The sad thing is the WHO gave China 10 months to clean out their labs, so I don't know that we'll ever know. The sad thing is it's just moved on. It's like it, it's not a non-issue. Yeah. It's a definite issue because of what could happen in the future. And we've dug into government databases and data found, we found that the NIH was funding this yeah. super virus leak gain of function research starting in 2002. I want to move on. And that the, Dr. Fauci has been blockading and stonewalling yeah. media outlets like the Washington Post asking questions about this. Okay, we, we're hearing from the U, U.S. experts, U.K. experts, Hong Kong, South Africa, health experts in Europe that Omicron cases could start to go down by the end of the month, really recede in February going into March. And UK's Boris Johnson is saying, you know what, we're officially going to say effectively COVID-19 pandemic is over in March. Uh, we will have no more shutdowns of living with COVID strategy. Why don't we have that here? Well, I think we should have had that all along. You know, I've said multiple times, Liv, we can't, Liz, we can't uh, stop living in fear of dying. And yes, uh, we have to look at what's happening in other countries and learn from them. You know, the sad thing is it's become hysteria where people are hiding still in their closets and running from friends and family. Yes, we have to take this seriously. And yes, I've been pro-vaccine, has been, as have you. But, you know, at some point we have to say, yeah, this is here. It's not going away. We need to learn to live with things. We need to get on with our daily lives and try to get back to some sense of normalcy. We can't keep having this happen every two or three months where we're having lockdowns. We simply can't exist as a nation that way. 
We're seeing Hong Kong and South Africa studies show that Omicron can give protection against the Delta variant. The yeah. common cold, T cells in the common cold, can give protection against COVID-19. These studies are yeah. coming out. But now you've got the Supreme Court might rule that, yes, OSHA can become a new, more powerful health regulator, mandate penalized companies for not vaccinating for maybe the flu vaccine. That's what yeah. Neil Gorsuch is talking about. And, you know, they could be enshrined. They could have their own cabal of lobbyists pressuring it, right? Yeah, Liz, this is a very dangerous precedent. I pray that the Supreme Court does not allow that with OSHA because, you know, their body, they've never done this before. We've had flu vaccines. We've had everything else before. And OSHA has never put a heavy hand on businesses or anything um, like that regard to push any type of vaccine. I'm pretty confident that the uh, Supreme Court throws OSHA's ability to do that out the window. They don't have yeah. the people to do it. They don't have the staff and they surely don't have the authority. Well, we're watching as deaths and the case fatality rate is plunging in South Africa, Af South Africa, the more that Omicron becomes dominant. But the problem here is U.S. media is really scaring the bejesus out of everybody. Let's watch this. Watch. They choose only those experts to quote who prefer an unknown hypothetical of fear over known facts. So listen, you'll hear all the time. Well, yes, maybe Omicron seems mild, but it could get really bad. We just don't know yet. We really don't know. No, we know the facts. They've been in from South Africa from the beginning. It is nothing to be afraid of. It is something to be celebrated because it is going to create herd immunity with very little public health cost. A lot of the media does seem, when I look at it and, and then travel the country, to be very out of touch with people. I mean, if you travel the country, people are not really living in the same uh, bubble that it seems that uh, most of the media is messaging toward. Listen, we should be concerned about Omicron, right? People don't want to yeah. get sick. But the point's well taken that the media bubble, they're out of touch with people out there on the streets and living in the heartland or just living Main Street lives. What do you say, Dr. Murphy? Yeah, and I, and I agree, Liz. I mean, CNN and, NBC and MSNBC want to blow things up and just have hysteria with emotionality. Hopefully, this is the beginning of this changing mutations of variations where it is less lethal. Yes, there have been deaths from Omicron, and we do need to take it seriously. But again, we don't need to have such an emotional, horrifying response for the American people. It's just not justified. Yeah, the pe it's like pandemic porn, <laughs> fear porn, <laughs> panic porn. That's what people are calling it. That's what we're seeing on social media. Okay, Dr. Greg Murphy, you're terrific. Come back soon.